<laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> That's the hardest part. <laughs> Is that my children never got to know her? I was cheated. <laughs> Mary Catherine Edwards was a vibrant and loved school teacher in Beaumont, Texas. On January 14th of 1995, she would not respond to phone calls. Her parents went to her home on Park Meadow Street in Beaumont, and there they discovered her body in a bathroom. Mary Catherine had been brutally assaulted and murdered. She was 31 years old at the time of her death. Beaumont police detectives and Texas Rangers conducted an exhaustive investigation, but the case remained unsolved. On April 29th of 2021, after an investigation of 26 years by the Texas Rangers and the Beaumont Police Department, Clayton Bernard Foreman, 61 years of age, was arrested for the assault and murder of Mary Catherine Edwards. At the time of his arrest, Foreman was living in Ohio. He has since been extradited to Jefferson County, Texas, and his trial began this month in March of 2024. Okay, is there anyone else in the house? My husband is here with me. Okay, we found her. Okay, is there no 
ਆ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੂੰ had some dresser drawers that were open look like there's some items that had been ruffled through uh, the bedspread and bed clothing was askew and kind of torn off the bed a little bit uh, clearly Catherine's body in the bathroom that was handcuffed and lying on the floor and then there was some clothing in the doorway a hat and some other clothing in the hallway the shower curtain had been pulled down and was lying across the, uh, the rail or the side of the bathtub and had been pulled down off the wall there was bruising on her hips that appeared to be from behind, as if someone were trying to control her uh, while assaulting her from behind along her hip line, what looked, appeared to be fingertips. That she was sexually assaulted just prior to dying. Law enforcement testified that there was no forced entry into the townhome. And although the door was locked, it could have been done so by the perpetrator when he exited. Using the lock on the knob of the door, before he closed it shut. The victim, Miss Edwards, had um, was laying on the floor with her head towards the tub and her legs more towards the door opening. Um, she was nude from the waist down. She had on a t-shirt and there was a towel that was draped over her upper body. Um, I also noticed that her hands were handcuffed behind her back.
Thanks, Noah. Noah mentioned this herself. Detective Aaron Llewellyn with the Omaha Police Department. Brandon Bess with the Texas Rangers out of Liberty. Tell us your whole name today, Bert. Clayton Bernard Farman, 422-1960. Okay. And what is your address, Mr. Farman? Uh, 1572 South Avenue. Okay. Zero Bernard Okay. And do you have your driver's license? Yep. Well, you know, I pull it out. Do you know the number? My driver's license number? Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll I'm blind. Sorry. Uh, 
Is that the only phone that you have? Just one telephone. Did you have a landline? No. A landline. Okay. So what we do is we look at old cases, obviously cold cases. You want to see cold case TV shows or times. 48 hours, you know, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. So you probably understand a little bit about what we do. So we look at cold cases. We look at what detectives and officers did back in the day on cold cases. We try to determine, hey, what were they missing? What did they not do? And normally what that is is they didn't talk to enough people. Normally in these cases, that's what we find is because they were limited in their manpower or whatever reason, the Internet used to not exist, all those types of things, that um, they just missed out on talking with people. So what we do is we look at these cases, I hate that we reopen them, you know, because cases don't really ever get closed and closed and just shut down until they're solved. But what we do is we look back and we say, okay, where did this crime occur? From where that crime occurred, who all got talked to? How far out did they go around the crime scene, the, the victim's house? What family members did they talk to? What friends did they talk to? How far did they go back? Did they go into college? Did they go back to high school? Did they go back to these people's elementary school? Whatever that crime is that we look at, and we look at a variety of different crimes. So how far did they go back? So the crime that we're looking at is the murder of Mary Catherine Edwards. And we found that uh, she and her sister, I think it was, um, and she was murdered in 1995. So we look back, hey, who were their friends? Who were they whatever? And we found a picture, of a wedding picture, that she and her sister, uh, Allison, were actually in your wedding. Right. And they came to you. 82, okay. Did anybody ever talk to you? We couldn't find any interviews of you. We couldn't find any interviews of your, your I'm assuming that's your ex-wife, right? You're not married to her. You got a girlfriend here, so. Right. That was Diana. Diana, well, her name was Dahlia. Dahlia, okay. So we couldn't find that even Diana got talked to. Do you ever remember anyone ever coming to you or to Diana about that crime? Were you aware of the crime even? No. You didn't know that the crime occurred? No, sir. Okay. Um, you didn't know that uh, Catherine Edwards was murdered? No, sir. Did not. So what year were you leave? Um, well, I left Houston in 2007. You left Beaumont? Um, I was in Beaumont. I left Beaumont. Could you pause it? At that particular stage, what the defendant was telling you is that he denied knowing that Catherine Edwards had even been murdered or killed. That is correct. Any knowledge at all of her death? Did you, during your investigation, did you develop other evidence which suggested otherwise? Yes. Okay. All right, proceed. 99, I guess it was. Okay. Well, you were living there when the crime occurred. So it happened in 95. And I knew about the yeah, you do remember who I'm talking about, though, right? Yeah. The plans, uh, Catherine and Alice, they were, I think they were bridesmaids from my next life. That's right. Okay. They were friends with her. Um, I lived in Port Arthur, left Port Arthur and went to Baytown. Then I came back to Beaumont, I guess in 98, moved back to Houston in 2000. And moved up here in 2007. Okay. So your your ex-wife, Miss Dalio. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know her last name. Okay. When you were married to her, mm -hmm. did y'all have much acquaintance with them, or was it just like a high school friend thing where, hey, when, when, when well, young girls get married, they invite all their old friends to be bridesmaids? No, was yeah, I think that's what happened. Okay. So you didn't know these girls. Not really. Um, I knew their brother, Blum. Okay, okay. So that's, that's about it. Um, Blum actually passed away uh, about six I, months ago. I read that earlier today. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. Somebody yeah. posted that he had passed away. Yeah, I think you pretty unexpected deal, too. I think you fairly healthy, just unexpected. He was younger than I was. Because yeah. I graduated in 78. I think he graduated in 79 or 80. Okay. And my brother graduated in 80. Were you friends with him? No, not really. Not with Long? Okay. Do 
Do you have any kids? Uh, I have a son. Okay. But he passed away in um, 2005. Um, no daughters, no other, no other children anywhere. No, that was the only that was <coughs> So back to the to the Edwards family. You knew long. Did, were y'all in classes together? How much older did you say you graduated when? I graduated in 78. Okay. And he might have graduated in 79 or 80. Okay. My, grad, my brother graduated in 1980. So he and your brother were, would have been probably in the same grade. I don't know what year long graduated from. Okay. I think the girls um, graduated with my wife in 81. Okay. Dustin being in your, your wedding. How long did you stay married to her? Miss um, Dahlia. 11. We were together for 14, but we were married for 11 years. Okay. Y'all were together before or after divorce? It's kind of a weird question, but y'all dated and then you got married? That's true. Okay. So we got, we got together. I was in uh, freshman in college, I think. And she was still in high school. Where did um, where did you live um, in '95? You think you were living in Beaumont, or do you think you were living in Fort Arthur? No, I, was, I think I was living on uh, the west side of Houston. Okay. Um, in 1995, Tuttle Creek Place Drive, or something like that. Tuttle. It was off of Highway 6. Okay. In Play Road during that time. Um, did you come back to Beaumont at all during that time? Sometimes. You have family there or friends? My, there? my mom lived in Beaumont. Okay. Did she pass? She passed. No, she passed. She passed. Your dad? My dad's been gone since. Um, 90 or 99. Okay. Maybe 98. Okay. He's a good one. And did your mom pass when? About? I 
I don't know that. Now, what about 81 is when you got married? No, we got married in 82. We bought the house in 84. Okay. And then we lived off of uh, 105. Um, some townhouses. When you get off the interstate, to the 69, you go the go 105, and there was a convenience store down there, and then there's the townhouse on the right hand side. Edgar. I think it's Edgar Drive. Mm -hmm. that, that might be right. Well, that's out of town. It's exploded again in back there. It's, it's amazing what's out there. I have a good Last time I went to Bono was uh, my class reunion. My four year class reunion. So it's about two. Coming up three, three years ago. So on Mary, Edward's Mary Catholic Catholic Rivers. Um, didn't know her well. Did you ever visit with her at all? Um, wedding night only would have been the only time you seen her. Probably so. Okay. Never dated. Never dated. Okay. These are dumb questions. I'm sorry I asked you. Did you? Um, never obviously had sex with her. No. Never. No. Did you Possibly. ever go in her house? Up? You asked her. If, you asked the defendant if he ever dated or had sex with uh, Catherine Edwards. Why'd you ask that? To establish where we were going um, with this interview, with the collection of information from him, um, because we had DNA at this point, and we knew it was his DNA. Um, establishing that, when was the last time he ever saw her, according to him? Had he ever had sex with her? Had he ever dated she or her sister. Okay. And he denied ever having sex with Catherine Edwards. Correct. And you go on to ask whether or not he'd ever been in her condo. I did. And he denied ever being in a condo. Correct. So the information you had at the time was is that the sperm on the comforter and from the vagina of Catherine Edwards was his. Yes. And so he on he had you offered that to establish that. Your Honor, objection. Cross the leading system. Why did you ask him, knowing that, why did you ask him those questions? To give him the opportunity to actually place himself there, I think is, is fair to say. Um, there, there could have been legitimate reasons that he could have been in her house had he dated her, had he had any contact with her. Continuing that that line of did he did his DNA have a reason to be in her to be on her and to be on her bed? Was there any reason for that? And the only reason that that we would know of is if he told us that that was the case. Yes, I had been to that house, or no, I had never been to the house. Following that up, the last time he ever claims contact with her was at his wedding in 1982. At his wedding.
Same too, yeah. Right there on the left between Yes, sir. And Catherine Edwards was murdered in 95? Yes. Yeah, I never went to like dinner with your wife and her 
remember, you don't even remember the house or seeing the house or anything like that. I don't even know where they live. Okay. But after, after Aaron described it to you, that didn't do anything for all. Yeah, I don't remember that area of the phone line. Not even that much. Well, I mean, I don't know where the high school is. Okay. But I don't know anything other than that. All right. Then, um, gosh, where else would, would you may get involved into or at work? You know, as you're selling from Nabisco, you never happen to see her come in a store during the, the period that you were working there, stocking and store to store. When she volunteered at St. Elizabeth Tea, did you ever do any work there or any deliveries there? For my, mom, my, mom, my mom worked there for 25 years, but I don't know. What did she do there? She was a rented apartment, uh, in the outpatient department, whenever you go in and check in, or she ran that department. Okay. So like right there, like that main entrance. Right. Oh, she first started out in, in ER. She ran that department when people would check in for the emergency room. Yeah. She would do all that. Check in the insurance and stuff like that. When did she retire? My mom? Yeah. 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 So she had been retired for a little while. More than five years, less than ten. But see, my mom was 69 when she died. And I think she retired when she was 62 or 63, so she might have been retired 57 years. Right. Probably retired when she started drawing Social Security and things. I think so. I think so. Was there anything that you had that you think you could show that could jog his memory? If there's anything there? Like where the house was in? Yeah. Do you remember what it looks like? Yeah, I guess. That's right. Yeah, that's her. I guess. Or is it your sister? I 
Vancouver. You're doing just Uber. Now that is some way off of what from the from doing the federal student loan functions. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess they, uh, they don't care about that money anymore. So they don't have that. <laughs> They're on furlough till uh, September, October. Yeah. How's the Uber business? So that make pretty decent money with it? These hundreds of thousands a week. Wow. How many hours do you have to work? Uh, 35 or 40 hours a week. That's a back of the door for Yeah. Start working extra jobs. You work, you work whenever you want to. You just turn your phone on and you get hits if you want. That's great. You accept, I guess, is that what it is? I'll take this one. Yeah. I've used it for just a couple of times. I've lived in the country, so one of the city. I've used it a couple of times. It's handy and saves a lot of money, too. I mean, goodness, if we here, you know, in town, you get out at an airport somewhere and you, you go from the airport to the hotel that's five blocks away and costs $32 on Uber's four bucks. It's, uh, it's nuts. And you still make money. We're glad to hear that, but they're not starving you to death. No, right now, because of the pandemic, it's been busy. Yeah. They work great for designated drivers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's no reason not to take the same thing and call you for a beer to take an Uber. Right. Okay. They have a big background investigation process, or how does that work? They run back for seven years back. Okay. Okay. Well, is there anything looking in their picture? Does that jog any memories for you? From the wedding? Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Have you ever seen her case? You know, a lot of these cases get highlighted on TV shows, and I haven't seen them, but the other thing is, like, a year and a half ago, her case was highlighted on the TV show. Which is an unsolved. Gosh, I've been so many now. Yeah, every crime is such a... Yeah, I'll pull your thing now. God, what's the lady's name? Uh, pretty blonde-headed lady. She has one. Hey. She's the one lady? Hey. I'll put it down Paul, but that's not it either. Give me a trick. I can't trick. I'm going to see your face. Paul is on. Paul is on has a big one that's a cold case. I, they call it how it happened. Or yeah, I didn't know it. No, she did. Did you watch any cold case shows? Watch the first 40 hours. Okay. Well, those aren't cold. Those so have to be solved within 40 days. That's like a good show. Well, right on. I was like, once we get that got the negative clock. They go past that. Yeah, yeah. that's reality right there. Yeah, that is true. Well, one of the, um, so there's nothing. There's, there's absolutely nothing that's jogged your memory. The only time you ever really remember seeing her after high school years would have been at your wedding. Never went to a dinner party with her. Nothing, nothing. Party, you know, partying at bars, partying at clubs. Never dated her for 100% on that. Never went to her house, 100% on that. Never had sex with her, 100% on that. Never, the same thing go for her sister, because her identical twin, she never dated her sister, never partied with her sister, never anything. You know, this, this is the night. You, you keep going, you, you keep establishing that his lack of contact with Catherine Edwards, is that correct? I did. Okay. And at that stage, you had been given information that, you know, the DNA from uh, the crime scene, the comforter, and the uh, inside of Catherine matched the defendant. Is that correct? That is correct. And so you were asking these questions to give him an opportunity to explain how that possibly got there if he was willing to admit it. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. And part of that, does that, does that help negate consent? Yes. Okay. Because, uh, you know, he did not offer any sort of prior relationship, dating relationship, social connection, and no sexual connection with Catherine Edwards at all, did he? None whatsoever. Okay. Proceed. Or her sister. Or her sister. And that's important because they're identical twins, and you could make the claim that maybe I accidentally dated her or something like that. That was my thought in this line of questioning, yes. You were negating that as well? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, that was the nineties. Okay, drugs, big deal. You know, eighties. You're you're a product of the eighties, coming into the nineties. You're divorced. Um, I'm guessing you were probably single at the time. Ninety five ish. Single for a long time. Okay. Drug use. We don't care. Just asking. Never been a weed smoker, coke user. I mean, I'm gonna smoke marijuana eight or ten times. Okay. Like in the high school days. Okay. Nothing sense. No. And you know, we're not judging you, we're just asking. No, no, 
was the 80s, so that's all you do. Yeah. Um, I've never, I've never been any of those at all, other than smoking a little marijuana. No cocaine, no methamphetamine, no psychedelic or uh, LSD, any of that kind of thing. So nothing that would cause you to lose your memory. In 95, were you extremely sick at that time? Were you taking medications? Did you have cancer? Did you stay in any hospitals for an extended period of time? 95? 94, 95, 96, let's say. Um, uh, I went to the hospital um, in the 2000s. Uh, 40, so let me see. Uh, yeah, I was, was 40 years old for a time I went to the hospital. I had uh, a I've been talking a lot. I've been asking a lot of questions. Um, Aaron has filled in. He's taken notes, etc. We want to give you a chance to say anything that you might want to say or tell us, hey, have you thought of this? So we'll give you the floor. I don't know anything. Okay. No. Nothing at all. No. No, nothing you would lead us to. No you know, people to look at. I mean, I've been in Texas for 14 years. Uh, and this happened 26 years ago. I think I was really in Houston at that time. Mm-hmm. And what, do you, what are your friends talking about? Clay. Clay. Do you mind if I call you Clay? No, it's fine. Clay, I'm on level with you. Okay. Yeah. Right here now, I want you to hear me real close. All right. Um, what we do now and what they did in 1995 mm-hmm. because of technology and advances in science are totally different. Mm-hmm. So, do you understand DNA? Mm-hmm. And do you understand how DNA works? Do you understand you're made of DNA? Right. He's made of DNA, I'm made of DNA. And that um, unless you and I are brothers or cousins or anything, or I'm your dad or um, et cetera, we're not going to have the same DNA. That the likelihood of our DNA being the same in this room is not just extremely rare. There are this set number of uh, likelihood of this wallet having now I've got my DNA, DNA on it, but there's a thing called uh, um, who has the most DNA? So I've touched your wallet one time and you've touched it hundreds of times. Whose DNA is most likely to be on there? Probably mine. Yeah, for sure yours. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what I'm going to tell you is that that crime scene was processed really well. But in 1995, as we like to say in police work, we hadn't invented DNA yet. Um, but by that, you know what I mean, we didn't understand it. It was in its very infancy uh, at the time. And, and I'm no scientist, man. I've got a two-year degree in criminal justice. I didn't have to take science class that I remember. So I don't know a lot about science. But what I do know is about DNA and about how DNA works in placing someone in crime scene. And what I'm going to tell you right now is your DNA was on Catherine's bed, and was inside Catherine. Okay. I mean, I don't know how I got there, but Chris A was there. There's only one way for it to get there. Okay. Um, and that's by you putting it there. And it's semen. And sperm. And it's yours. Okay. Do you understand that? Uh, Do you understand the implications of that? The day that she died, the night that she died, your DNA is in her and your DNA is on her bedspread. Your DNA is in her vagina, and your DNA is in her rectum, and her blood. And you're sitting here telling me, you understand DNA. Yes, you understand that. Yes, and you understand your DNA is all over that wallet. And my DNA is on that wallet a little bit. There's nobody else's DNA that was inside her, and there's nobody else's DNA that was on that comforter on that bed. And the only way for that to have gotten there would have been for you putting it there. Now, I don't want you to say anything right this second. I want you to think about the next words that come out of your mouth. I want you to think very hard about that. You're a smart guy. There's no doubt about it. You have a great vocabulary. You are articulate. You have college. You have high school. You've lived life. You're 61 years old. You live in a nice home. Okay? Your DNA is in her, your 
DNA is on the that got there one way. We know how it got there, as in who put it there, and that's you. But we don't know the story behind how it got there. There's two people that know that story. You're one of them, and she's the other. And she can't talk. What I ask you is, now, to be honest with us completely, and tell us, how did that happen? I'm not going to say anything. You probably need one, or you do need one. So if you're saying I did that, then I might need an attorney to talk to. That's up to you. If you want an attorney, you can get an attorney. That's absolutely fine. It is. We don't hold that against you. We do anything like that. You're here voluntarily. You get to walk out of that door right now. You do. Or whenever you want to, if you can walk out of there right now. We're giving you that shot to tell us your side. But... If you want to not talk, and if you want an attorney, we're good with that too. And that's up to you, though. Understand? That's, that's the route I'll take. You have to tell me completely what route you're going to take. I, I don't need an attorney. You, you want an attorney? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, that's all we got then. We're going to let you walk out of the door just like we told you. I'll help you and get you back to these guys and uh, get you going. 